so uh, let's begin. This is a little bit of an impro improvisation now because Jonathan was supposed to start, but I hope that uh, you'll get the gist of um, the presentation anyway. So my name is Luana Schwarz. Um, I'm here um, as a researcher of the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research and together with Jonathan Dongis will speak about the world earth modeling that we are planning to do uh, with Copan Core for the Earth for All project. Um, I added this a second ago because uh, Jonathan is not here and he doesn't have any slides because we wanted to start with the Copan Core framework as a short introduction. I'm not an expert in the framework, so I just um, speak about it roughly for a minute or so. You can see um, some taxonomies here. Um, that are the kind of the conceptual basis of the Copan Core modeling framework. So it's a framework um, that uh, allows to model a different kind of um, um, social ecological or world earth, uh, as Jonathan calls it, interactions. Um, we have different taxa here, um, the socio-cultural taxon here, um, which kind of models um, society and uh, agent interactions. We have the social metabolic taxon here in the middle that is kind of the intersection between the society and the nature basis and the biophysical taxon here. So this just as like a tiny introduction to the Copan Core framework. Um, it's not, not a model in a classical sense, but um, it's a possibility to kind of plug together different model components to build your own model and it allows for agent-based but um, differential equation um, kind of modeling as well, so it's quite free. Um, and I will talk a little bit about uh, what we are actually planning to do with Copan Core um, in the scope of the Earth for All project um, related to regenerative agriculture. Um, so I thought I'd start quickly with three words about the project itself. So Earth for All is an international initiative that aims to accelerate uh, system changes, need for an equitable future on a finite planet. That's like a very um, yeah, big words overview of the thing, and they are kind of trying to break this um, mission down into five uh, different topics to work on this uh, global system change. So these are here on the right. Um, they have equality, empowerment, poverty, food, and energy. Um, it's a collaboration between the Club of Rome, the um, Norwegian Business School, Stockholm Resilience Center, and PIC, and the PIC group is working on the food system transformation. So that's basically why I'm here talking about agriculture. Um, and what Jonathan and I are aiming to do is uh, talk a little bit about the spreading of sustainability, innovations, and regenerative practices in agriculture. And we um, want to look at this from a producer side perspective. So kind of the farm to farm spreading, not so much the consumer side um, at this point. So basically what we have um, here is a lot of research kind of on, on the topic um, on the LPGML side. So what we aim to do is take Copan Core, um, the, the yeah, agent-based modeling framework that we have, um, and couple it to LPGML, which is a dynamic global vegetation model, and hereby create like a dynamic exchange between these models. Um, so we have a lot of research also at PIC on kind of the FGML side, um, which deals with kind of the biophysical changes and land use that would be needed in order to get to like a sustainable system for land and water use. Um, and what we want to do or what we want to contribute kind of with this work is um, integrate the social or sociocultural preconditions that are needed for these transformations. So we have work on the biophysical potential here on the FGML side. And we want to have a look at kind of the social feasibility um, of the implementation of such changes. Um, so basically look at the social preconditions for the shift to regenerative agriculture. Um, and here you can also see like on, on the graphic um, on the right, what we were thinking um, of like information to be transmitted between these models. So um, LPGML can, for example, calculate the status of the planetary boundaries can give information about yields, soil quality, and water availability. It could be provided to Copan Core, so um, our society component. And um, the agents in Copan Core could then react to this and adapt their land use behavior and adopt maybe new management techniques. So that's like just a little toy uh, example for how this coupling could um, yeah, take place. So, um, we are very much aware that the spreading of innovations does not really only happen on a single social level. Um, 
there's many social levels involved surely and these are interconnected um, but we still focus on the individual agent and group level not because we think that this is like the silver bullet to everything but because we just thought it would be a nice different perspective um, compared to the classical economic subsidy kind of models um, to make a contribution here. Um, now I'll just quickly talk about a couple of net social and natural processes that we would like to um, yeah, model with our or in our work. So first of all, um, we want to build on the MoHub or HubCC framework or frameworks. Yeah, um, pick stuff from a sheet. Okay. <laughs> uh, to basically try to fine tune our ideas of uh, agent decision making and kind of also the resulting behavioral dynamics uh, to make that um, adapted to the context because here on the right, uh, you can see that it's also important to us to keep um, in mind that context is uh, important for decision making. So social culture as well as biophysical context. Um, that's on an agent level. Um, on the interagent level, there is um, different processes we would like to have a look at. So the spreading of social norms is one. Um, social contagion theory in general, which kind of is also part of social norms, um, but just as a theoretical foundation, and then also um, the potential of social learning processes are like three key um, things that we would like to have a look at in yeah, relation to regenerative agriculture. Um, that's what comes next. So um, what we want to have a look at in the spreading process um, regenerative agriculture is, of course, a very broad term, and there's different definition approaches around. Um, but one can see that there is some common elements that seem to pop up in all these definitions. So, for example, having cover crops, integrating livestock, um, having no-till systems, minimizing chemical inputs, crop rotations, and increased biodiversity, and then agricultural systems seem to be some common elements. Um, and we um, kind of want to work with the options that LPGML has already implemented because the whole coupling endeavor will be um, uh, enough of an adventure to begin with. So we want to um, use what we have on the LPGML side for now. Um, think about land use in terms of um, different irrigation systems or the water use um, in such a regenerative system um, and also different management options. So these kind of help us to, or these options actually help to um, integrate the regenerative principle quite well already, because we can um, work on fertilizer menu, tillage, and um, also residues left on the field. So that's kind of our options to, um, yeah, tinker around with regenerative agriculture and LPGML. Um, and the planetary boundaries are here as well, because that's also just a feature that LPGML has for us to calculate. Um, some research questions that we want to ask uh, with the model or to the model are um, about sensitive intervention points and probably also social tipping points uh, that could lead to an accelerated spreading of sustainable agriculture innovations for this um, Earth for All context that we are in, basically. And then we'd also like to take like a criticality perspective, maybe and look at which social preconditions can be supported for driving agricultural systems to change. Um, I think that's it for my side or 